Kissing room production. And in the place to be, we got the legendary granddaddy IU. Clap it up, man. Ah, bless you. Welcome, man. What's going on? What's the deal? Ain't shit, man. I'm ready to get into it, man. Oh, uh, all right. Definitely. Yeah. Yo, I was surprised, man, when I saw this album when it came out, because, you know, I know you dabbled in the production tip, but I didn't know it was like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I always did. I just never bragged about it. Right, right, right. You know? That's usually the case, man, with a lot of the best producers, too. You know, why do you, they, they, they never feel like they got to stake that claim. Like, I, like Q-Tip is a good example, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, crazy. So, K Def. K Def. Shouts to K Def, man. He's family. So, how did you get in? Like, was it the same, you know, collecting breaks, all that type of shit? Like, yeah, yeah. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, my moms and pops had, you know, all the old school records at the crib. So, mm-hmm. naturally, I was a music motherfucker before. Yeah, just get a little closer to that mic. That's all. Before, you, you know what I'm saying? Before the hip hop shit started. And right. when, when the breaks came out, of course, we're looking for all the breaks. Right, right. And in the, in the, in the, in the midst of that, you know, we said you sign, you find uh, fucking bass lines and yep. horns and, you know. People were just so much more musically inclined, I feel like, back in the day, man. Yeah. Like, I know, like, they, they say production styles and sounds have changed. I don't think for the better in a lot of ways, you know. Not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. This flip the script radio. We don't do the political thing here. We, right, we, just, right. we tell it like it is. That you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And if you think about it, like young guys, like cats your age back then, the Pete Rocks and the Primos, the sample uh-huh. sources that they were using right. shows what a broad musical knowledge they had for what would today be called kids, right? Right. You know, we still had interest in the music that came right. before us, you know? Yeah, like now, motherfuckers don't give a fuck about no shit it's from crazy, the past. It's that's, crazy. Why they, that's why that shit's be whack. Yeah, definitely. But they don't, man, think, you, they don't you, think it's whack, though, because their cheerleaders cheat them, cheer them on, though. You yes, know what I mean? Man. They ignore the you foundation. And, and the fucking radio play it. Right. But that's only because they get paid to play it. Of course. So, you know. so it's an ugly system. Yeah. I, when I heard you were coming, I, got, I, I had an immediate question in my head. Uh-huh. What what did you love more, or, or were drawn more to, MCing or producing? MCing, always. Word. MCing, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you, a fact. You definitely got the voice for it. That's for just, sure. Just, <laughs> I fell out of love with it. You know what I'm saying? So I want to still contribute to the to the game. So I did the production album. You know what mm. I'm saying? And got my my shooters on. You know what I'm saying? So they can oh, do it. You okay. Know what I'm saying? It's definitely so. You definitely feel like I mean I'm sure you witnessed a lot of politics in the game and a lot of um, yeah. the behind the scenes. Like a lot of people just. We've had in the five years that we've been doing this show, and I've done radio, you know, before this. But in the time that we've been doing this, we've had people that have come through that just think that like if something is dope, it gets attention. Nah. Like, and that's not at all how this shit not works, at man. All. You want to talk about some of your some good stories and horror stories from the industry? I mean, I mean, like, I got shit right now that motherfuckers don't know nothing about. And right. this shit is fire. And it's just like that, you know what I'm saying? If you don't have the machine behind you, right. you get lost in the sauce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I dropped I dropped some shit. The first shit I dropped after Cold Chillin' died was in 2007. I don't even think it was like social media and all that shit so it was like Not at that point, hard, yeah. to pro- hard to promote this shit you know Better what I'm days. saying and Biz put you on how'd you meet yeah, yeah 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 he um where'd you meet that brother at um, in Long Island because he always be in Long Island shit Hempstead but um he had got a five artist production deal and he even had five artists so <laughs> he was scrambling around he was you like, know what I'm saying looking for somebody to sign I live in the same town as Cool V we live like oh live yeah five Elizabeth from me. yeah I'm in Elizabeth yeah, yeah that's that's my man right there shout out to Cool V Vaughn, Vaughn is another one man he's another one from that era that you know no one ever says anything bad yeah. about yeah you yeah. got cats that as soon as you say their name people are like mm. fuck that nigga yeah yeah but yeah. Vaughn definitely nah. not yeah but go ahead man one of the coolest motherfuckers I know in the game you know definitely. what I'm saying yeah and unsung That's too, man. He produced yeah. a lot of that shit. He yeah, was in, you know, he was yeah. in the studio for Jingling a lot of that. baby and all that shit. Oh, were yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of niggas don't know that. Yeah, Vaughn was another one that never really was looking for attention because he was always a records dude because he worked at Vogels, you know, the record spot mm-hmm. where they where they shot the Vapors the video. The Vapors, right. And he was always in there digging, always. Oh, right. Yeah, always. So Biz was your way into the industry. Were you happy with it once you got in or were you like, um, oh, that's some bullshit? <laughs> I was happy until everything went sour and then, yeah. you know what I'm saying, I started realizing where the fuck my money at. Hold up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then I, when you first get in, you don't know nothing about no publishing or just that in the third world, recouping. Right. And all that shit So you just having fun mm. And then all of a sudden 
<laughs> like, hold up. And plus, the money wasn't really there like it is. I mean, now yeah, it's like yeah, this. You know, yeah. I mean, cats were making money. That's right And it's it's crazy because here in Jersey, I mean, I'm, you know, it was playing everywhere. We was rocking to the joint. Mm, that's what's You know, that's something new joint when it came out and oh, represent yeah, all of that. Yeah, man. yeah. Because yeah. again, fu- again, it was a break that we always loved. You know, the, 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 the fucking, that shit was I'm crazy. I'm your puppet. I'm your puppet. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. I had to do that. Can't go wrong with it. And plus, it's just like the whole delivery. So I'm sure you got the Kane comparisons, the Rock yeah, him yeah, comparisons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that shit. Fuck I mean, that shit. Not bad dude to be compared to, but I'm sure like yeah, you probably I, were doing the shit as yeah, long or longer. You know, you know what I'm right? saying? Like I always tell niggas when I was locked up in '86, my melody came out and shit. And I'm calling my man. He like, yo, some nigga sounded just like you. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you talking about? I still don't see. You know what I'm saying? A comparison, right. but yeah. it is what the it crazy is. thing is. Is like you mentioned the machine before, and that's the thing. Like yeah. whoever gets that machine behind it and gets that record known before. He becomes the guy. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No matter yeah. how long you've been doing it. You know? Man, you could be whacker than the motherfucker with a machine behind you, and right. you could be the dope and you're saying niggas that think you dope. We right. see it all the time. Yep. That's all that I, happens now. I, just, I can't understand this shit. That's one of the biggest differences, I think, between you know back in the day and now was like, before the shit got exploited by the in- industry and it turned into, you you know, you had to be ahead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the heads knew you couldn't yeah. be whack. I mean, you couldn't was, be whack. You, you know? couldn't be, you couldn't. You couldn't fucking buy the nigga name, couldn't buy the nigga style, none of that shit. You had to be different. And so did uh, Smooth Assassin, did it take you around the world? You, you got you everything you wanted at the time? Or, nah, it didn't give me anything I wanted. It got me some good shit. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As me just coming in, not knowing what other motherfuckers was getting at the time. Right. You was a teenager at the time. Nah, I, huh? I just turned 20. Just turned 20? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was big at that time too, man. What? That's a great time in hip hop, man. I'm still on the block, so... <laughs> You know what it is. Like. That's why. That's why I'm saying. Like maybe you got everything at the time you, you might have thought. I you got might. a lot of shit. I got more shit than I had. Yeah, you right, know what right. I'm saying? That's true. But compared to you know when I look back, nah, I ain't. I ain't get nowhere near what I should have got. I mean, like, I don't think like you just don't have the perspective at that point in life. Nah, like, you don't. Just, I love uh, music. Yeah, I want to make music. You're so deep hey. in the forest, you don't see the trees. Yeah, yeah. that's that exactly. whole syndrome right there. So as, as you living it, so it's like as time went on, though, did you you totally got away from it? Were you doing like any A and R shit or like nah, writing shit? Nah, nothing? I just, I mean, I did, I did a couple of, you know, go through a couple of joints. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, how'd you hook I, up with Big L? Um, at Columbia and shit, because I was on Epic, because they had um, Cold Chillin, Cold Chillin had lost their um distribution deal mm. with Warner, and they went to Epic. And um, you we, we in the same building, and his his A and R was like, "Yo, this nigga Big L, he like, he love your shit. He wants you to go go drink with him." I'm like, "All right, cool." Oh, okay, that's good. You know what I'm saying? It was just like that. So you had no you had no knowledge prior though, like you weren't nah. really familiar with. Wow. I, nah, I ain't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was just a cool nigga. So you like, yo, yeah. I love he was this. a quiet guy too, though. Like I remember like seeing him around back in the day. Like people, you know, because the shit he talked on the records, you would think he was yeah. like. But he was a quiet, quiet dude, yeah. man. But when he, you know, when he was on the joints, he came to life. Crazy with it, yeah, yeah. Crazy with it. Rest in peace, of Big Al. But it just goes to show you, like, even even as talented as he was, it's still like a, people that talk about him now wouldn't be if the machine didn't start to get behind him a little right, bit, right? right? Isn't that crazy? That's, like yeah. somebody like that would have went totally unnoticed if yeah. it wasn't for the oh, he's gonna fuck with Rockefeller and all that type yeah. of shit, like you know well, what I mean? That never happened. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, but still, I mean. He looked the, the the crew that he came up with, you know what I'm saying? Children of the Corn. Nah, DITC. Oh, the DITC. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. So he would have been all right. Yeah, but I, I don't think. You don't think so? Yeah, I, I think he would have been all right. But Columbia definitely, yeah. you know what I'm saying, put the battery in that shit for sure. Yeah, it was just such a different time, man. Like people, people didn't have to be told what to like back then. Yeah, you notice that that's how yeah. it is now. Yeah, and that's why, like, when you when, like, you know, when we started doing this, we wanted to focus on all the underground shit and the music that doesn't get, you know, the the mainstream, you know, attention. Right. We didn't want the show to turn into old man radio because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of cats from our era that just feel like everything stopped in 1990. It's right. like, no, the right. shit still exists. Right. <laughs> you know, no, no diss to that, of course. But like, man. if you don't, if you're not playing this shit, how do you expect people to know about it? That's you know right. what I mean? That's a fact. And everybody say real hip hop don't exist no more. That's yeah, how you know they ain't listening. Nah, they just ain't on the radio. Digging That's is all. different now. You got to dig. You got to yeah. dig and find well, the you right stayed, But you stayed within the circle doing production. Yeah. Like Goss Effects. Yeah, yeah. Um, KRS-One, KRS One. Yeah. Ice-T. Yeah, I just hook up with Ice-T. Like T. Um, actually, DV Alias Christ I hooked me up with him because um, he was fucking with Smooth Hustler. Okay. And Trigger the Gambler. They had um, SMG. 
Sex Money and mm-hmm. the Guns, they had a little crew together and shit. So he was always around in Brooklyn. And you know, I was doing some tracks and shit with, with Christ. He was like, this shit sound crazy. I'm gonna give this shit to Ice-T and see what he think. And they called me up like, yo, he wanna buy this shit immediately. All right, nigga. All right, hey, listen, give me such and hey, such. Let's go. Sounds good West, to me. So, right. so this new joint is called the Essence, right? The, it's the essence. name of the new joint. Yeah, that's so right. you did the entire the joint. entire shit. Yeah. So a lot of the cats that you got on it obviously are people you knew. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I got, I got my two. Soldiers. Some of them are here. I got my two shoes right here. I'm waiting for you to play some shit because I wanted to fuck shit up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh challenge. Because I, I, he told me to, to look at the um the YouTube. So I'm seeing everybody doing the freestyles. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would you say your production influences are? I have my own ideas, but um, I like a lot of people, man. I like Dre. I like Forty Five King. Mm. I like Showbiz. Showbiz, definitely. Um, People just don't mention that dude enough. Yeah, he, Diamond D, Premier, of course, you know what I'm saying? Right. The usual suspects, you know what I'm saying? Large Pro. You got the early, like the Said G's and all those type of Yo, guys. I just I just did. Um, Gorilla Grooves, right? Yeah, yeah that's all you guys said up G, yeah, yeah, man. Cool dude, man. That's Paul C. Do you ever, you ever deal with Paul C at all? Nah, or? nah, yeah. my man, Mikey D, that was his favorite. Yeah, Mikey D was, was here, what, shit. back in 2016, I think? Right. He was another one, man. That long ago? I think it was that long. Yeah. That put that joint out, you know, that last album he did that had yeah. joints on it. But it's yeah. like, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, we have to be in tune with this shit because we put on a three hour show every week. And when you see the amount of music that comes out, you mm. realize how controlled the industry is because right. it definitely ain't no shortage. You yeah. know what I mean? You like, can't the music get is none there. of that shit on no mainstream radio. That's just bananas, man. Like, thank God for fucking like Shade 4 or 5 and, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And uh, shows like this and Gorilla Grooves and mm-hmm. the ones for y'all, man. It's crazy. But well, people, are, people are catching unheard. on. I think people are catching on, though. You know, it's it's a slow moving. Uh, I mean, because you got <laughs> Griselda and you know, you got some young cats that's doing it still. Right. So it is kind of catching on. But I mean, I don't, I don't see it returning to the mainstream. I don't think so either. But you I don't think saying? it needs to anymore, though. That's the thing. You ever think of doing voiceover mm-hmm. work? For TV or have you done nah. that? Oh, you got a good voice for it. Should man. look into that. Thank you. For real. Should look Shit. into that. If they cutting the check. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we even get into this, do you um you run across a lot of younger artists? Do you feel like there's there's people that you could kind of talk to about this shit that are, are receptive, or are they just kind of like ah. Eh. No, um, not really. I don't be talking to motherfuckers, man. <laughs> that's the answer I was looking for. Best that, answer that's me. we've gotten yet to that question <laughs> on Flip Script Radio. Yeah, don't sleep yeah. on the production. So you want to give out all your contact? How can they get in touch with you? Um, right now, um, you know, uh, IG, Granddaddy okay. underscore IU. Um, nice and direct. I like that. No, yeah, no yeah, middleman. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't really fuck Could with nothing else too much. You know what I'm saying? Just Could, on IG. You okay. cop everything you you've you know done on. Uh, yeah, go to Bandcamp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Granddad, granddaddyiu.bandcamp.com. All right. You know what I'm saying? I got like seven projects on there. Okay. And um, you know what I'm saying? Get all that shit, man. And all you know, iTunes, all that other shit, but the right. band can't go straight to me. Definitely, yo, and go get that essence yeah, joint, so man. As soon as you pay for that shit, next month the money is in my pocket. All right, so go, <laughs> go to band camp. <laughs>